So I was um parking lot of Planet Fitness earlier. Yeah. I was uh watching some MMA highlights and I was just kind of playing with my dick. Not really like <laughs> doing too much of that. I kind of realized I kind of had like a full heart on going. District three comes over and they're like, uh, "What are you doing over there?" And uh, just like, "Oh man, it's killing some time." And he cop leans over, he peers in my uh, in my car. He goes, uh, "You working on nine roper over there?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I don't know. Why don't you uh, yeah, yeah. stick around for a second and uh, see we'll what happens?" Yeah. And so he does. I then moved away from women MMA fighting to men MMA fighting uh, highlights yeah. uh, to kind of get the juices flowing. Long story short, man, I make a complete <laughs> mess of my bird dogs yeah. and my fucking Corolla. This is a cop, you know, he smirks and he goes, well, it's pretty good, but that was more like uh, eight and a half. He's like, I'm going to need you to take those keys out of the ignition and put them on the dash. So he called some boys over from the, from the station. <laughs> they just like worked me over for a little bit. You know what? Not even once did the lunk alarm go off. <laughs> 48 minutes of dog barking. 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 Growl. Growl. 48 minutes of dog barking. 48 minutes. So, uh, what are you sipping on there, Chief? Gerald's Gold. Gerald's By Gold. Athletic Brewing. That's the, oh, it's a Netflix collab. The Netflix beer. Thanks. Thanks for <laughs> making it feel saw- real. <laughs> Thanks for really taking all the pun. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the net. The, the John Lovitz and Seth for Wives. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a painting again. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sorry. The logo jumped out at me. It, it, oh, it's just, uh, oh, the the soulless corporate tie-in, the soulless corporate tie-in non-alcoholic beer. Too. It's actually it's, really fucking tasty. I bet. It's a, uh, yeah. Well, it's athletic. The, the Witcher's Hoppy Hells. Okay, so it's a hell style. Okay, all right. Yeah, I really like it. Um, oh, it's right probably on. the best athletic that I've had. I think, generally speaking, you know that we're fans here at the show. Yeah, well, because apparently alcohol just makes me fucking just feel like dog shit unless it's like a margarita that i buy at a mexican <laughs> restaurant and then i feel great yeah but everything else like i just have a hard time with but oh what are you drinking you still drinking your fucking beer i got the bro? the luke combs uh, miller light beer never broke my heart uh, special cans there yeah broke beer mountain <laughs> i just can't yeah. quit you then, I, it's it really can't uh, um, I, it's a shame i don't have a beer to open because that would be a perfect time to the, the, yeah <laughs> throw that in there and post i just can't quit you <laughs> yeah there's a lot to get to this week. Yeah, the world is piss. So I guess I should start with a funny one. You know okay. who Colleen Bollinger is? I'm saying the name wrong, but I think it's Bollinger Ballinger. Oh, I think I know who this is. Performs as Miranda Sings. Giant red lipstick around her lips. Freaky uh, overdone makeup. Oh, she looks like a fuck doll? Yeah. Oh. Uh, had, a, had a Netflix show called Haters Back Off. <laughs> you know what? One of the things I like about getting old... Yeah, is sometimes stuff like this just does not enter my sphere. Yeah, like there's some there's some stuff that's like you know what like I wish I was cool and hip enough to you know to have been on the the, the front end of this you know phenomenon or this like cultural thing. But sometimes when I learn about people like this, I am like I am so glad that I'm dying. <laughs> I'm so glad that like you know shit hurts when I wake up. Right, like, right. I don't have to know who this person is. So Colleen got her start on YouTube, where she created the character Miranda Sings, socially awkward. And she's playing a teenager. Now, of course, she herself is 31, but, you know, she's playing a teenager. And, you know, she's come under fire recently because, you know, um, fans have accused her of abusing her power, um, you know, sending weird shit to underage fans. Her uh, pair of underwear? A pair of underwear. But what's, that's not really the story because, unfortunately, shit like that happens all the time in, in these YouTube creator spaces. What made me cringe so hard I physically felt pain was how she chose to respond to it. And this came out today, courtesy of Rolling Stone here. In true millennial cringe fashion, Bollinger delivered her message through a 10-minute YouTube ukulele song. The only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser. 
who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans and I'm not a predator even though a lot of you think so because five years ago I made a fart joke leaving behind probably the only time a notes app apology would have been preferable <laughs> <laughs> That they're uh, credited to, of course, C.T. Jones writing for Rolling Stone. But, uh, oh boy, it's terrible. It, I'm not going to show it to you because I'll, uh, I will I'll die of secondhand embarrassment. But yeah, it is, I, I, uh, you know, any, any, any single time you do something with a ukulele <laughs> and you're not listing off the potential side effects for uh, a prescription medication. <laughs> yeah. That was actually one of my favorite things at Guitar Center was when someone would start, when I worked at Guitar Center, was like someone would start strumming a ukulele like when the guys at the guitar desk. Yeah. And I was like may cause insomnia and yeah. uh, uh, irregular heartbeats. And like, and I, I piss people. They like, they, everyone, everyone knows like one or two ukulele progressions. Oh, sure. Progressions, yeah. And they start doing, dun, 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 dun. and I'm like, yeah, yeah you know, may, uh, you know, an erection lasts for more than three hours. Consult your position. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Because that's a big trope in like Kickstarter videos or in, in yeah. pharmaceutical ads that there's that cheery ukulele sound going on. Yeah. If, if you really want to piss off guitar people, pick up an acoustic guitar and just start playing the opening chords to time of your life <laughs> and never be within striking distance you that also used to be one of my favorite things like oh here's this really nice martin that we just pulled out from the back <laughs> pop it up on my knee getting it right and, and, and people would like fucking chase me yeah <laughs> i can say <laughs> i probably would have done the same yeah. but yes a, a, a 10 minute video where she's strumming a ukulele and talking about woke mobs and cancel culture I'm, I'm sorry the woke mobs are coming for me right because i allegedly sent like a 13 year old my underwear yeah here's oh my yeah this is the full lyric this sheet is the that transcription I've, of the lyrics yes, yes courtesy of uh, harris's child on twitter thank you at harris's child colleen bollinger's ent entire 10 minute Apologies. This is the Zoyak speaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really does. Some key excerpts. So I just wanted to say the only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser who didn't understand. I shouldn't respond to fans. I'm not a predator, even though a lot of you think so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. So even though this video won't change anyone's mind about me, I felt it was important to come on here and defend myself a little and take accountability so of course she's trying to rhyme accountability with me terrible songwriting not Ugh. not a and yeah and this woman's like in her fucking 30s with three kids yeah uh <laughs> three kids <laughs> three kids acting like yeah yeah this is embarrassing it's painful but she better have groomed those kids <laughs> Yeah, because wouldn't that be the worst? If this the was worst like, thing is like you did this and you like to be innocent, yeah. to be just this embarrassing. Because then you had like you know what like then you're just a different kind of monster, Ugh. which is one that sucks. Yeah, like yeah. you're not even one like this is the Andrew Tate like trafficking women in Eastern Europe thing. Like you didn't even yeah, you did. It didn't even it wasn't even good. Like yeah. <laughs> there's a refrain that keeps coming. Is all aboard the toxic gossip train. You got a one-way ticket to Manipulation Station. Choo-choo. Cancel, 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 cancel. Choo-choo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, just, oh boy. But of course, the internet being what it was, at Skatey420 did come up with a wonderful uh, antidote to this, which is, of course, 11 seconds long. Thank God. And it goes like this. I'm so sorry that I groomed a bunch of kids. <laughs> Couldn't have done it better. Couldn't have that's, done it. that's pretty good. I appreciate that. Oh no, we're gonna we go watch the grimace video. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's uh, watch that. I I, I I sent that in the group chat and no one responded. So on Twitter at its institution. No, it's its intuition. Jesus fucking Christ! Fucking learn how to read, man. Learning how to read. All right, I'm just I'm just learning. It's fine. At its intuition has compiled a series of grimace shake videos wherein zoomers and and, and people who are chasing the grimace shake and, and and like entering different states of consciousness, waking up in a cult, winding up convulsing on the sidewalk and covered in the purple this shake. Is good. It's really uh, kind of the anti-marketing. It's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Adbusters wishes they could. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
oh, you take a sip of it and then it cuts to something horrific or like you're covered in goop or <laughs> my favorite was the one it was this like kid with like like the, the zoomer mullet he mm. took a sip and he was like hanging from a bridge <laughs> and then puked on himself <laughs> <laughs> he's hanging from a bridge by yeah. his wrists <laughs> okay purple goop all down him yeah puking on himself amazing <sighs> So what this is, for those of you who may not be aware, may not be as online brain as Brian or myself, is that, of course, it was Grimace's birthday or whatever, and McDonald's decided to release a special purple shake. And so instead of just ignoring it, these kids are uh, turning the purple shake into a horrific potion. Some have claimed that it's Grimace's blood <laughs> or, or, uh, or lean, <laughs> which is cough syrup and Sprite. It's also very much in the vein of what happened with the Spider-Verse burger. People were doing very similar videos of that. Oh, was, there was a Spider-Verse burger? There was, yeah. Burger King had a Spider-Verse burger where the bun was red and the, the um, seeds were black. And it was like, take that a bite. sounds gross. It's fine. It's just food coloring. It's kind of like when they did the black bun burger yeah. and then everyone's poop was green. So that was fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was it? <laughs> if I remember correctly, that that is what happened. I mean, it takes a, a Pepto Bismol and get the same. That's true. I mean, it is free publicity for McDonald's. That so is kind of weird that people are jumping on this so quickly. But it is also creative and weird and kind of yeah. fun. And a lot of people who are into horror are making like horror themed ones. There's one that really riffs on like it follows. Like you take a, a purple sip of the drink and then you're just like standing there zombified staring at the camera. You know, there's some there's some creativity on display within the limited confines of TikTok, which is, you know, a very short video and all that. So I'm of two minds on this subject. A, it's free advertising for McDonald's. But the other one is like, but they're getting creative with it. They're having fun. So I don't know. I mean, what are you supposed to do when like the earth isn't going to be inhabitable in 30 years and you're like 20? Yeah. What, I mean, what, right. what is there to do with like the end of, of the world that you're living in? God damn. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I guess you throw up purple shake and, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> do whatever. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. There's there's some young people I know where it's like, you know, if the world was still like if it wasn't like you know uh, crashing into a wall, I'd be like, man, you're like you need to get your shit together. But I'm like, you know what? There is no shit to get together <laughs> right. for. Yeah. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah, yeah I get like, it. <laughs> we're all going. We're all going to be fucking fighting over a bent fucking baby Ruth, <laughs> <laughs> the last one in the fucking you know. yeah. Mm. Well, speaking of the capitalist hellscape in which we live, TikTok also figures largely in this next story. About the fast fashion brand Sheen? Shine? Sheen. Sheen. Okay, see, I got it wrong twice. Uh, so the fact of the matter is, folks, Yeah. this clothing is highly toxic, high in lead. Not great. Uh, and then contributing to uh, islands of discarded uh, clothing in mm -hmm. Africa. Yeah. Uh, just a, a total awful, miserable fucking thing. Fast fashion is uh, bad. It's uh, very mm -hmm. bad. Very uh, bad. Uh, terrible, even. I mean, every once in a while I get like a Shein like uh, Facebook ad or something. I'm not gonna lie, there's prints and stuff uh, like for like dress oh, shirts. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. but I'm like, and it's ten bucks. I'm like, what come? <laughs> what damage comes with that ten dollars? Oh yeah, yeah, because you know it's yeah, yeah, it's probably pretty high, both to you and to the people making. I mean, like, what's the human cost? What's the ecological cost of something like that? Like, like I'm not gonna pretend that I'm like a stylish person, but I, like I, I think I can dress pretty decently. Yeah. But I always like pick stuff that like it's always going to be kind of evergreen. Like I don't want to chase trends because that means no. you're always buying new shit. Yeah. But if uh, it, you know, there are there are some ways to dress out there, folks, where you can look nice and clean, mm -hmm. have good lines, mm -hmm. find stuff that feels good. You feel good and comfortable in yeah. and you can wear it pretty much all the time. It's yeah. never really going to go out of fashion. Well, like I've been wearing, you know, a flannels, T-shirt and jeans since pretty much 96. I haven't stopped because it's timeless you just just it's, yeah. a, it's a vibe you it's a thing you, you can still wear it today but Shein, they're making headlines this one courtesy of gizmodo which i didn't realize was still a thing but apparently it is mm -hmm. Shein decided in their infinite wisdom that they were going to pay a bunch of instagram influencers and tiktokers to come out and tour their facilities and get lead poisoning <laughs> right well, well, yeah, hey, thank you everyone for checking out the Shein factory here <laughs> in Sri Lanka. I'm sorry to report that you're all now infertile. But apparently the influencers took these videos. They the it, the facilities look clean. It's all uh, corporate PR bullshit though. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the thing. 
There's even a quote here. Upon interviewing the workers, a lot of them were really confused and taken back with the child labor questions and the lead in the clothing questions. Influencer Destiny Seduth said in a video posted on her shared TikTok account, they weren't even sweating. We were the ones sweating. All right there, Destiny Seduku. <laughs> like, that's not... Funny. Sweatshop isn't literal, you guys. <laughs> uh, not in the, in the contemporary sense. No. The influencers, you know, talk about how cool it is. Employees are incredulous. The influencers say the factory tour proves it's just a big misunderstanding. Maybe even anti-Chinese propaganda. Like, there's just... There's layers and layers and layers of bullshit on this. It just... It, it feels bad. It feels bad that this was a thing. But what's good, much like the Grimace thing, it's what's good is that people on TikTok and other people who are usually influenced by these influencers immediately called bullshit. And so, thankfully... A lot of that was kind of because every other story that I've heard about this is dunking on these people for being so oh, yeah. gullible and, and, and rightful and, and, to do so. Uh, uh, one one lady uh, was getting pointed out for being like, well, for like being like this TikTok fashion Nisha fashionita Nista Nista. There we go. Neither one of us can talk today. Uh, like, <laughs> man, she sure dresses like shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She does not look uh, well put together in the video. It's just it, like, wh- what? What is happening yeah. here? So of course. As I always say, the internet being as it is, they someone on TikTok immediately uh, got in on this, doing a fake influencer tour of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a Triangle Shirtwaist ambassador here in New York, getting a closer look behind the scenes at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory here in Greenwich Village. There are lots of stairs and exits in case of emergency. And they use a lot of technology, which puts less work on the workers. I've also loved getting to know all the people here on the Triangle Shirtwaist team. I'm so thankful for Triangle Shirtwaist and all the opportunities it's given me and others. <laughs> Just the, the idea that like, immediately someone said, okay, this is bullshit, and here's a historical riff on it. I, I found that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that Triangle Shirtwaist is still a lesson that we can learn from. So that, yeah. that, that was interesting to me. Influencers in general are just toxic. I, that's just my thought. I just, it's like, yeah, um, and it sounds like I think people that that get into inadvertently becoming an influencer because they have like an interest, and they're yeah. just like you know, if it's music or video games or like just anything sure. that they're knowledgeable about and they, they're excited about sharing with people, and they like, oh, I'm actually kind of comfortable in front of the camera, and people are responding well to this. Um, people that like have a conscience mm-hmm. and like uh, like are decent human beings usually at some point ha- come out of the video being like, I hate doing this. Yeah, actually, I, I can't do this anymore. This is hurting my soul. Yeah, like they're... or or I've now gotten to the point where I I make money and it's good money. It's becoming less and less viable as like a thing for my mental health. Right. Yeah. It it seems like a terrible way to live. It, it's really especially disgusting because last year. Actual investigative journalist Iman Amrani put out a fucking documentary about Sheehan yeah. and about their crappy conditions and, and the fact that there's, you know, punishments for mistakes and like barred windows, no emergency. Her documentary was fairly comprehensive. I don't know yeah. if you've seen it. I heard about it. To follow that up with like, hey, guys, I'm here. at the... no, no, fuck you. Just take your lumps and deal with that. Like t- trying to counter the narrative a a year later, too little, too fucking late. Also, trying to do it in such a obvious way, I think, is what really gave a lot of people cause to like give them the finger yeah. publicly. Sure, fuck them. I, <laughs> I can't even defend it in any kind of like artistic fashion because there's no art to it. It's it's all the same shit. It's piss. You know what else is piss? What? Marvel's marketing. It's more marketing nonsense. I know I'm going kind of whole hog on the whole marketing thing, but I'm oh. fucking feeling it this week. We got scrolls. From the upcoming uh, Marvel show, actually it just released, uh, Secret Invasion, it's the Marvel show that's come out. The whole story is about aliens disguising themselves as humans and whatnot. Local newscasts have had actors in scroll makeup appearing on camera, brief shots, no explanation. Much like the, that awful marketing for the movie Smile, the movie was better than the marketing kind of thing. And I, uh, But yeah, you've got scrolls appearing in uh, news broadcasts background shots here in LA you got stuff where you know they're walking through by Jimmy's food store oh it's a uh, gourmet uh, authentic foods from Italy yeah oh how about that fresh meats and sausages and a, and a scroll 
Well, boy, the fucking monkey's paw <sighs> that curled when someone wished, like, I wish there were, like, comic movies that were decent. There's a Twitter user, Robert Skvaria. His post is, it's awesome a major studio developed a viral marketing campaign al- around sneaking their Illuminati reptilian characters into real news broadcasts in the era of QAnon, a movement that totally won't think this is predictive programming. And I did have that David Icke reptilian thing going off in my brain when I saw these images first. I was like, oh, someone- Watch this video of Hillary! <laughs> Yeah, Some, watch her blink. Someone is going to see this, and it's going to activate something in them. It's going to be a whole disastrous thing, and all this to support what Some is guy essentially in Cape a is is going to find another way to alienate his grandchildren away from <laughs> away from him even further, and all this to support what is, by all accounts, a mid TV show. So I just can't imagine wanting to watch Marvel stuff. Some of the shows have been all right. I like She Hulk. You know, um, we watched. Loki, and mm-hmm. we thought that was fun. We watched WandaVision, oh, and yeah. I thought there was some stuff there that was good. It's very hit or miss. Miss Marvel was just okay, unfortunately, because it was like, oh, good premise, good setup. Didn't really yeah. do anything with it. I, I've heard that Moon Knight is all right. Yeah. I, I, mean, I like Oscar well. Isaac, and it just so much of it's just like, I, eh. yeah, who eh. fucking cares? I'm, like, I, they shot their wad too early narratively, I feel like, and also... Chris Hemsworth is like, yeah, this is like emotionally like is about as fucking deep as a puddle. And <laughs> like these characters, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, I think the only thing really deep and interesting that Marvel television did so far was the what if series. I didn't even touch that in a weird way. It actually kind of leads into the second Dr. Strange movie. Anyway, um, mm. there's some story bits there that are interesting, but okay. <sighs> to kind of cleanse us of this, Ed Zitron, of course, a, a frequent guest of the show. I uh, love following his account, especially this week because he posted this. Thank you, at Steve G. Bennett, for sharing a promoted tweet from Grandpa Factory. <laughs> oh, yeah, Grandpa Factory is the shit. <laughs> Can you tell the listeners what Grandpa Factory so, is? Because I Grandpa barely understand Factory it. Grandpa Factory is just like a bunch of AI <laughs> generated images of just like the happiest old white guy at any <laughs> bar in the Midwest. He's hanging out. He's drinking an ice cold sag because he's just like, you know, I retired from the tire shop, but I can't stand to be at home. <laughs> so I'm just going to go hang out at the bar with yeah. the boys, give out some life advice. It's ill advised, but generally be a pleasant and lovely person. <laughs> so their bio reads AI generated imagery of older, mature men with a few extra pounds. Grandpa appreciation is my general focus, mostly safe for work. Some topless nudity. <laughs> so the header is a, uh, a portly grandpa, big donut in his hand, <laughs> making like the 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 ah face like, like King the, Kong kind of yeah yeah, yeah. just uh, by Grandpa Factory. <laughs> it's just and the post he highlights here is wise, warm, and oh so loving. Grandpas make our world brighter. Let's celebrate their incredible affection and share their beautiful stories of love. And the photo is a uh, again an overweight grandpa, big beard on a on a, uh, a carousel. carousel. Thank you. Couldn't think of the damn word. He's on a carousel. He's got his eyes, big thumbs up. He's just having the time of his life. And yeah, we should share more joy like that. It's a shame that they can't get real pictures. Like it's it's one thing to like find pictures of grandpas just having a time. Yeah, it's another thing to have it AI generated. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of the few AI things where like I don't hate it immediately. It's harmless. It, it doesn't you know it doesn't really hurt anybody. <laughs> Someone did point out you know there's some MC Escher shit going on here. Sure. I wonder if the Grandpa Factory is a union shop because you'd have to <laughs> <laughs> full name the Grandpa Sucking Factory. So that's the <laughs> yeah we should unionize the Grandpa Factory. All right. I went from good to bad. We're going to leave you on this one. This is the last new thing on the internet this week that I found interesting or disgusting. It's an ASMR TikTok. It, it is a um, awfully... I, I want to say it's a filter, because God, if that's makeup, he's really overdid it. Uh, of Trevor with three Vs. Let's chew on my grandmother's breast implants. He's doing the AMSR. Uh-huh. Whispering. She did get breast implant illness from having these in, he says. She gave them to him as a gift. And so then he puts them in his mouth and begins to chew. 
And it goes on for way too fucking long. For a minute and a half. <sighs> hey guys, let's chew on my grandmother's breast implants. They taste very implanty. <laughs> and then he puts both in. <laughs> you know what? It's very rare. Like, I don't even think, like, shock.jpg ever yeah. really turns my stomach. That that did it for me, yeah. Yeah, like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> the, the thought process that has to go into doing that is just... It's beyond me. I don't know where... It's, just, it's like anything for a bit. I guess. God, I hope that's just a bit. I mean, it, it looks... Unfortunately, those do look like real implants. They look like they look like look like a little used. They look like they have a mm. couple of miles on. Yeah. Ugh. All right, let's talk about crypto scam of the week. You're listening to 48 minutes of dogs barking the podcast, and now it's time for the crypto scam of the week. I got another twofer, Brian. One that you sent me, and then one that I found. Uh, we're going to start with the funny one, and then we'll go to the sad one. If that's all right with you. Sure. Okay. The funny one is the blockchain for dog nose wrinkles. <laughs> I love watching his reaction. I'll say something like this to him, and he physically deflates. You all right over there? I just... Why Why is this a thing that deserves money? Oh. Are people... Like, why is this an idea that can gather money? Yeah. Like, at least even, like, like the fucking fake blockchain movie thing, like, eh, sure. you know, whatever, I can see how, like... Dog wrinkle? Dog nose wrinkles? So, the basics of it is that a South Korean company put out this white paper saying that their new blockchain technology is going to be able to identify dogs by the wrinkles on their nose with data stored in the chain or some other nonsense that's not possible. So, they lured investors in with that copy and all all that stuff. The investigation... This is courtesy of DL News. Found what the company promoted to be its dog nose wrinkle reader was shock of all shocks, fake. The South Korean police say investors have lost more than one hundred million dollars in what it describes as a typical Ponzi scheme. They have arrested three people and charged another sixty-four people with alleged fraud. It lured victims to invest in this company, the company which the officials did not name, by the way, which I think is the most interesting. It You've arrested the, uh, the people. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I wouldn't put it past them. Apparently, they were also saying, that, like, oh, yeah, you're going to have this app that's going to be able to identify dogs by, by the wrinkles on their nose, and ret- it's going to be a high return on your investment. Well, yeah, both of those things can't be true, and also one of them probably isn't true just right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, even if you did have an app that could identify a dog by its nose wrinkles, how, how are you going to make money on that? I don't get it. There's no use case for it. People are fucking weird, man. The scam promised up to 150% returns in 100 days. And they raised $127 million thereabouts from 22,000 people. The police, whose arrests included an executive in that fraudulent company, said most of the victims are in their 60s or older with no experience in cryptocurrencies, and that does not surprise me. But the fact that they were so easily suckered in and then had to go... Because, you know, cryptocurrency, you've you've been um, around a while. It's not easy for someone with who's not computer savvy. Right, you have to have some level of computer literacy. I mean, there's obviously Binance... Coinbase and there's other entities out there that make it easier to interact right with the blockchain but yeah I mean I remember many many years ago trying to set up my computer to mine Dogecoin as oh, a joke yeah because I had a buddy who was doing it it's actually it's really it's easy and I tried setting it up and I was like ah, you know what maybe I'm not that smart <laughs> was that the the moment you kind of went mm, this isn't for me no I mean like that guy if he still has that hard drive probably has you know probably a couple hundred thousand dollars with a dogecoin on there so uh wow. I'm, I'm sure he doesn't think about that at all ever because <laughs> you know i think there were people that as a joke probably i think left their you know had like a fucking media server you know oh uh, sure and just like farm doge you know for oh, yeah. years for a year or so and yeah, I mean, they probably had some spare hardware sitting around because, I mean, if you're like me, you hang on to it. I mean, and Brian walks through here every every week and he sees this motherboard sitting around. They still haven't put anything, you know, put anything yeah. together with it. What the fuck but, are you doing? I think I'm making a NAS, but I don't have enough hard drives. 
the, this this particular scam gets me mostly because the uh, it's sixty years or older. That oof, yeah. I'm assuming that if they're a scammer worth their salt, they probably had like a team. Oh yeah. That would walk these old people through it, you know, and make sure they got their money. Yeah. Double click. <laughs> What's the the drop? No. Yeah. The drop down. Yes. Okay, and put in the number. No, not your phone number. Yeah. <laughs> I worked tier one phone support for hotel Wi-Fi, and I've I've been there because this was, and it was when the iPad first came out, and so boy, there were a lot of old folks who just didn't know what the hell they were doing. I'm uh, trying to watch Matlock on my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck, lady. But yeah, I can't I, imagine. I'm trying to watch ridiculousness because Rob <laughs> Deerdick's just so gosh darn funny. And they're not wrong. I mean, when they're right, they're right. You know what's something terrible? My girlfriend recently exposed me to the, the fact that Rob Deerdick's a wife guy. Oh, no, he is? He's an absolute wife guy. Oh, no. It's about the only thing likable about him. <laughs> yeah. All about his wife. And he, like, married a woman that wasn't, like, a blonde, like, West Coast bimbo. Good for him. Yeah, it was like one of those things like, oh, man, like, look at you, like, not, like, playing up this, like, guy yeah. with too much money from Ohio yeah. that's not t- tall enough stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very specific guy. Is yeah. <laughs> he's, he's very Ohioan. Yeah, he definitely has that, that Ohio vibe. I, yeah. can't, I can't explain it any further than that, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a look. It's a feeling. You know it. Yeah. You know when you see it. But, yeah, being a wife guy. Well, I mean, look, I'm a wife guy, but you just don't hear me talk about it on the show. Yeah. You can be a wife guy in private. It's fine. <laughs> my relationship with my wife is private. Uh, yeah. Behind closed doors. <laughs> oh, it's like people say I have a very special, like, private relationship with Jesus Christ, but... <laughs> yeah, but it's very much the same kind of thing. But yeah, it's my, yeah, wa- my, my, my wife. Uh, my wife. My wife. My wife. So the one you sent me, Brian, the Crypto Scam of the Week Part 2, of course, is Azuki. Yeah. Oh, boy. This one, this one was... Uh, this was a bit of a shocker to me. It was like, wow, all right, double dipping. So give me the basics because I've got a, I've got this tweet okay. here. But uh, yeah. So my understanding is that this artist or this individual released a series of NFT mm. artwork. Yeah, what looks to be very uh, manga style, very cool. It doesn't look bad. I mean, it's like the same thing with uh, like Oni where it's like, yeah. like this is clean. Yeah. And whatever randomization uh, characteristics they choose, like they are complementary. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it's not as abrasive as Board Ape or some other shit I've seen. But uh, my understanding is that they were hyping up that they had like a new collection was like uh, Elementals, I believe. It turned out when the, they did the reveal, okay, and I believe these were all two Ethereum each. Yes, which is like what thirty two hundred dollars at this point, thereabouts. Yeah. So people were spending thirty two hundred dollars. They thought it was going to be like new unique artwork you know new series new characteristics they thought this was gonna be a new release you know whatever i get yeah they thought it was something new something new and it turns out my understanding it's the exact same shit (laughs) yeah so according to this tweet from at charlotte fang 77 azuki really sold a 20k collection at two eth exclusively to their own holders extracting 40 million only for the art to be revealed as basically identical to the main collection immediately trading below mint and dragging its main collection down 40 percent the design was hilarious too it was a dutch auction but it only began trailing price downwards for the public after their own holders had the exclusive chance to pay full price which they happily did (laughs) maximum Pain. Thank you, Charlotte, for that phrasing. Because yes. <laughs> oh yeah, Max. Max. Yeah, Max. Pain is a is a uh, <laughs> something you hear in crypto a lot. Is it? Okay. Oh yeah, but uh, but yes. No, this is a what would most certainly would be called a Max Pain event. <laughs> <laughs> Just like God, that is that sucks. Yeah, that sucks so bad. <laughs> it's it, it's not even that like oh someone spent like a couple hundred bucks and it turns out that their fucking internet JPEG was the same as their other internet JPEG. It's like they spent thirty two hundred dollars and they got shit they got nothing they got uh, god you know like and multiple comments you know it's a shame to see such a well-crafted smart contract used for something like this and i mean i don't know much about the smart contract itself but the art itself is is fun. pretty damn good i'm really i'm just this one image that i have the azuki elementals um, you know there's maybe like eight of them on screen here but i mean they're all fairly distinct they've got interesting there's some unifying things. There's some classic anime stuff. 
Right, but the, there's a there's a, a clear and clean art style being portrayed here, and none of it looks really out of place. Yeah. And so it's just like, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, uh, you know, people do a scam. Right. And it's like, but what they're scamming with was, like, good enough. Right. You could see people feeling like it's good enough. That they, you probably would have been profitable if you just had been, like, you know, legit. Again, I, I don't think I would ever actually buy an NFT, but... These are nice pieces of art. This would yeah, be something like if, that if, I could if see. Someone, if someone told me that, like, oh, I bought some NFTs and they showed me these, I'd be like, well, you know what? You could have done a whole lot fucking worse. It's right. Not, it's not, uh, you know, pixel art. It's not a fucking bored ape derivative. Exactly. It's not, yes. You know, yes. lonely lions or whatever, loyal lions or the, you know, fucking. I do feel bad because, like, you believed in it and it looked good. Yeah. And you just got, you got swindled. And boy, doesn't that just suck? Double dipping. Azuki caught 40 double million. Dipping. 40 million. It's nice work if you can get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Yeah. Hey, yeah. But, and, and you got to think, like, that's that's some serious art because, you know, that's to be able to make all that stuff fit with the randomization and all that mm-hmm. stuff. That's that's some pixel pushing. Like, somebody's sitting there with their, you know, Procreate out and they're, they're really. Yeah. They're really doing the work, and what but, a waste. <laughs> but, but unfortunately, it was all the scam some people on the internet. So, Brian, every once in a while, I, I think about what the web is like on the other side of the pond. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they have the same hair as we do. They do, but sometimes, sometimes you come across a site, and it's almost as though it was a copy of something that the U.S. had, uh, but somehow they made it better. And I think yeah. in this case, it actually was one. Um, it is called Beta. It is it rhymes with Peter, so it's Beta. B three T A. Okay. In my mind, it is the British version of something like Drew Curtis's Fark dot com or the Something Awful main page, the front okay. page. So it's a it's a site, right? And you got articles and, and all the usual whatnots of a, of a of a site that started in the early two thousand. This mm-hmm. one started in two thousand and one. It's got all the main features you can think of. You know, you got your news feed, you got the articles and whatnot. It's got a nice, robust message board. Again, something awful uh, vibes there. Also, FARC has a pretty healthy message sure. board. There's a lot of things that are very common among those things, like Photoshop <laughs> challenges. <laughs> and this one here, by the way, beta, b3ta.com, is still active they are still posting things this is not a relic of the old web it's actually something that has survived for 22 years largely unchanged as if you notice the way the the site is laid out yeah it, it has it's it's not uh, modernized it, <laughs> it's frames or whatever at all and they are actually i discovered this late they are one of the the people behind fess hole are you familiar with this i'm not so fess hole is a crowdsourced Google Doc where you anonymously post your confessions. Mm, okay, yes. And then they they post things from it. Well, now they actually have a very best of fess hole book <laughs> that is out. It's British people confessing weird shit anonymously, very much like Post Secret. That old, that yeah, that's yeah. another one we'll have to visit in a, on, a, on a future show. But Post Secret was was this guy's art project where he gives you an address and you send him a postcard with whatever secret you want to divulge to him. So it's very much in that style. Beta is still very much alive and well. They do all these challenges. Uh, here's one problem solved: the official Alanis Morissette Spife, which is a which <laughs> is a spoon knife. And then it's because uh, you know ten thousand spoons. Well, all you need is a knife. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's a <laughs> here's one that they gave people a, a series of images of gnomes, and of course they created Klaus gnomies, Scouse gnomies. It's a very British joke. <laughs> yeah. When you were like telling me what this site was, when we were like, I, mean, I asked you what the topic was going to be, like, oh, it's like you know, like the British rotten. And I had this like thought in my head. I was like, oi, bruv. <laughs> What's that old geezer over there doing to his bunghole? Yeah, I, I I mischaracterized it when I said it was was rotten. I think more in the I think. More <laughs> well, I'm a little the... disappointed that there's this not a bunch of like <laughs> living mean, party, a little strange, isn't it? Perhaps I oversold it that way, but but you know, there's there's great stuff. They interviewed Patrick Moore, which was a guy who is this eccentric genius who, um, you know, it was a cartoonist and all that. 
they got some great writing, and I think that's where the rotten comparison comes in. Not necessarily rotten itself, but the you know the mm-hmm. writing that came from rotten. So all the oh, what was it called? That 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 section on rotten that was that was all the the, the library. Thank you, daily yes. rotten. It, all of that it, it is very much mirrored in this style of this particular site. The site is still run on donations. Unlike something awful, the message board does not cost you money to <laughs> to register. So it is not. Uh, Hope you got ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> they do question of the week. The, the, the show, the site is still very, very active, and I think that is the most interesting part. So you, fair listener, can go there. B three T A dot com. It is not B three T A dot co dot uk. By the way, which I find is most interesting because it's usually when a UK yeah. site. That's that's where you go. I do you have a weekly newsletter? That is still being released. They do a weekly Photoshop contest. Again, something awful mm-hmm. at Photoshop Fridays. They have a links board. And that's a place for beta members to share interesting links. Again, something awful, awful link of the day. Like there's so many analogous bits. And somehow this site has managed to avoid a lot of the stuff that like even FARC has fallen victim to. Just kind of the, the modern monetization schemes or some of these things where oh, this again, you know, you, you don't see a lot of that on this, which I think is really, really fascinating. They did have, oh shit, Beta had its own radio show, which was on the FM dial in London. They had it for about, uh, yeah, they had it from August of 2003 to July 2004, Thursdays at four. <laughs> the owners of the site were the hosts and they had guests on and real fun stuff. They had, oh yeah, they, they interviewed uh, people like, for example, uh, Miles Hunt of the Wonder Stuff, the oh. drummer from Blur. So, you know, for about a year, they had a, a pretty interesting thing going on on the radio. 2006, independent publishers The Friday Project launched a book called The Bumper Beta Book of Sick Jokes. Users submitted sick jokes. It very much like that bathroom uh, joke book format. Yeah. I love those bathroom joke books. <laughs> so they, they I'm shitting books. and laughing at the same time. Exactly. You get your business done and you have yourself a laugh. Oh, you're talking about like the, the big John's bathroom reader. Yes, and stuff. exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things you're like, yeah, I'm, just, I'm going to read, you know, 10,000 words about a guy <laughs> who was illiterate post-Civil War Georgia who wrote a book that was so bad and so poorly composed that now it's a collector's item. (laughs) You know, just like weird shit like that. Oh, yeah. They did have their fair share of controversy. Beta was responsible for... So so Virgin, the the record company, asked Beta to run an image competition in which board members could win PSPs or an Xbox 360 for creating something on the theme, what would happen if you said yes to everything? Remember Virgin had that Mm -hmm. whole marketing campaign about to say yes or whatever? I'm just just imagining, just knowing how the internet was back then. So Virgin canceled the challenge early because they did not like some of the images being included, including Richard Branson of Virgin, (laughs) urinating... On Rob Manuel, dressed in baby clothes, Rob Manuel, the co-founder of Beta. (laughs) I have a very vivid image in my mind of that, but also I have, boy, did something awful have something like that? You know, where like some some company was like, yeah, we want to have an image contest. And then it wound up being like the owner of that company pissing on low tax. Like, just just like. Teen taste of mango steam in my piss. (laughs) Low tax. Richard Kiyanka. Can't get this on Gold Belly. <laughs> Can't get this on Gold Belly. Oh, oh, what's this, Richard? I'm taking my stinky piss all over your your uh, least Nissan GTR. <laughs> Imagine if Lotax did not die and he was on that sub. Oh my God. Oh, uh, that would probably be the best day to be on the forums. <laughs> <laughs> Owner dead. So what? Uh, Everyone's using the EN tag. <laughs> Yeah. So they also ran into some trouble around the 2012 Olympic Summer oh, Olympics no. in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a beta member posted an alternative logo for the 2012 Summer Olympics that resembled Goatsy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Which was fine until the BBC found that image and ran it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> BBC Summer News, uh, BBC News 24. Uh, <laughs> ran it as part of a viewer submitted contest <laughs> amazing and then 
They got in trouble with Prince. This one is very strange. Yet another Photoshop challenge. This one coming out of 2007. This is a, a quote from theregister.com. Lawyers acting on behalf of Prince have sent out a flurry of U.S. copyright infringement notifications of individual members of a popular U.K. website. A number of users of beta.com have been slapped with DMCA notifications after posting images that f- poke fun at the pint-sized pop star's ongoing crusade to rid the internet of unauthorized Prince materials. Beta co-founder Rob Manuel told the register he was, quote, surprised Prince's lawyers had bitten. So apparently this was done in an attempt to get a response Amazing. from their lawyers. Manuel wrote, under threat of legal action from Prince's legal team of potential closer of the website, we have removed the Prince image challenge, and Beta apologizes unreservedly to AEG, NPG, and Prince for any offense caused. We also ask our members to avoid photoshopping prints and posting them on our boards, which, of course, led to the exact opposite happening. Of course. <laughs> you tell someone not to do something, especially on a site that's all about being a shithead, well, they're going to do it. <laughs> Arguing that the legal noise being made by Prince against his fans was counterproductive, he says, it's what happens online. Web censorship blows up in the censor's face. And he's absolutely right, because that's what always happens. The Streisand effect kicks in, and boy, mm-hmm. everybody just wants to do it. They're going to do it anyway. Well, he can't do anything about it now because he's dead. Well, that's true, too. But, but you know, this was 2007. He was still <laughs> Prince, with us at Prince the time. Prince is dead post-Prince memes. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, well, I mean. Odds asleep forever. <laughs> Post-rare Prince memes. The kicker on this story really gets me, because again, 2007, this was actually happening. In recent months, Prince has stomped on Pirate Bay. That didn't work. Pirate Bay still around. An 18-month-old baby having a boogie to one of his songs on YouTube and three of his most popular unauthorized fan sites. That is absolutely true. I was a member of Prince.org, and we really uh, got hit with a lot of stuff on on that time. So, yeah, that was a... Yeah, I um, worked, like, a really weird job when Prince died, and, like, whatever, like, the equivalent of, like, Slack or Teams that we used. Mm -hmm. Just, like, this lady was, like, Prince died, and then someone someone was like, yeah, but... um, I don't know how much I want to describe this job, <laughs> but we we did stuff for people, but we weren't like a, a service. We were like the middleman. Mm-hmm. So we had like deal with like Maytag customer support and like 100 flowers customer oh support. It was a miserable fucking like call center yeah. job. But I just remember like, you know, one of my coworkers and being like Prince died and everyone being like, yeah. Well, who's gonna help me with my white hunter flowers bullshit? Just <laughs> like, not like, caring. Yeah, like, like not... yeah, like it was. Oh man, that sucks. But uh, that doesn't make this job any better than know this <laughs> right now. <laughs> I gotta tell you, if there's any time that I really ever enjoyed working that job was like around holidays. Okay, because uh, we get all the white hundred flowers complaints. Oh yeah. Oh and, baby. Oh man, would never buy from white hundred flowers. Yeah. I actually, I think the most depressing one of those, because you get like, oh, this kind of like ruined like the surprise I had for my wife sure, or like, sure. you know, you know, my, my aunt was going through this tough time and I thought this would be nice, but now it just feels like I was styling on my aunt by giving her like flowers that were already dead. And she, <laughs> I mean, like, but the worst was um, this really nice lady, you know, this is like 2015, 2016. So not everyone, like not everything's so ubiquitous as far as like tech working across platforms and stuff like that. And she's like, yeah, um, I bought some flower arrangements for, like, my grandmother's funeral, and they were bad. And, oh, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, oh, this sucks. Man. She's like, and she kept insisting, like, I need you to see photos of these. Oh, boy. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, she's like, is there an email address? And I give her my email address. And she's like, I don't know how to send an image from my phone to your email address i'm like well if you're really insisting this is important for your claim i gave her my cell phone number Mm. and i know how to take a photo from my cell phone i just email to myself my work email right and this little black lady and a nice little dress there's her dead grandma in this open casket and like the two shittiest fucking flower arrangements i've ever seen i was just like 
I, oh, I, that job really hardened me as a person. <laughs> that was one of those few moments where I'm like, yeah, ma'am, I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you get your money back. This is embarrassing. Like, I feel, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for your family. Like, this right. is like, this is like a, this is like morally offensive. This is what yeah. like, you Jesus. paid for. Nice. And like, even though you probably should have known better, like, this is genuinely upsetting. It's just yeah. like this little old lady and like, there's a dead grandma. And again, I mean, it looks like shit. It looks like the flower arrangements that you would pick out of the dumpster. Oh, that is Anyways, awful. Anyways, 1-800-Flowers.com. Do not use do it. Do not use. Yeah. You're literally better off just going to the park and grabbing <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. I just go to the botanical gardens with a fucking reusable like Whole Foods shopping bag. Yeah, that'd probably be better. Yeah, <laughs> just grab a bunch of shit from the uh, Chinese garden. So I really liked rereading the FAQ on Beta because again, it's a very old website. They still have an FAQ, which is charming. I always like yeah, to see it's that. Really ancient. They call themselves about celebrating the best stuff in the internet. We send out a free weekly newsletter, stuff with the finest links the internet has to offer. And we also have message boards where anybody can show off their creative skills. Um, the site was founded by Rob Manuel, Denise Wilton, and Cal Henderson. Rob does the editorial stuff like newsletters, quizzes, and flash things, RIP flash. Denise is the designer. She makes the site look pretty. Not anymore. Uh, and Cal, he coded the foundations of the site today. Can I employ Beta to make my website slash viral? I'm guessing with the website go viral. Yeah. Rob, Denise, and Cal take on freelance projects. So you can hire the, one of these three to uh to Maybe they can help us out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the Beta newsletter is still around. It is sent out every Friday. You can still subscribe to it. Here's a, one of the headlines. The newsletter that has seen out six British prime ministers. <laughs> It's been around since 2001. It has that's, seen. That's an amazing it's, way to put it. I respect that. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. I imagine it's through 2001 by squeezing into smaller jeans and reading this ASCII newsletter. And yes, the newsletter is formatted very much like what you would receive in your inbox in the 2000s. No, you know, no images except to what they link to. Links to Kickstarters, which, okay. Uh, description about a fess hole. Here's a fess hole entry recently. I sucked off a guy down a garden path at 5 a.m. We heard an oh my god and both turned. A woman was stood in her dressing gown looking mortified. I fled the scene only to get a message from him saying it was his mum. Then a second message asking me to go back and finish him off. <laughs> yep. So every week you can get uh, fess hole stuff in your inbox there. And uh, boy, my landlord confessed that he only put my rent up because the letting agent told him to, and he wouldn't have thought it otherwise. I got my revenge by repeatedly reporting their business as permanently closed on Google <laughs> and Apple Maps. Um, that's fantastic stuff. They they go through every week. They you know, I mean, we're talking about like recent stuff. Here's a, a a sequel to the original Atari ET game that somebody built on the web. You can click through that link and play that game. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Morrissey or Keir Starmer create the quiz that might have done numbers a few years ago. <laughs> 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 yeah. Who said it? Morrissey or Keir Starmer? Yeah, oh. That's, that's good stuff. And they do have a Patreon where, of course, you can support their, their works there. But I just, I think it's charming. The fact that it's a time capsule from 2001, they're still sure. out there doing the thing. A very uniquely British sense of humor. Uh, referencing Keir Starmer for some, you know, some of our American audience who wouldn't know who the hell that is. Uh, for those of you who are not aware who Keir Starmer is, um, let me give you just a brief. He's the leader of the Labour Party. It seems like an absolute fucking nonce. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, he's uh, a former criminal defense attorney, which then a barrister. But, you know, he, he, uh, <laughs> he's he been in there since 2014. He is, in fact, not the absolute lad. No, no. He actually was uh, very much opposed to uh, Jeremy Corbyn, who is the absolute lad. Yeah, uh, he's the boy. <laughs> Boy, you know, and you know, he he originally, you know, in the eighties and nineties, did write for like uh, socialist alternatives and socialist lawyer, but it seems he's uh, come around on that. And so, I mean, that's no, how it always is with these fucking shows, <laughs> like these fucking right of center, whatever, whatever, like political you know, yeah. climate they're in, the right of center people, like 
Chris and Samara or whatever mm-hmm. her name is. Yeah, like, Chris you know, and Samara. Like, yeah. you know, was fucking look at her now. And apparently she was like at Battle Seattle and all of this shit. And right. And now it's like, I won't let you have health care. Tee hee. You know, yeah. whatever her deal is. <laughs> Raquel, look at me. I'm taking away people's rights. <laughs> Aren't I cool? All right, cool. Like, I, I, dress like, I dress like Courtney Love's assistant. And like, oh. You know what? That's actually probably the best description I've heard of her is Courtney Love's assistant. Yeah. <laughs> Not Courtney Love herself. Because Courtney Love actually has a sense of style. Anyway. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. All right, we getting greasy. We are going to get greasy. It, it's it's time, of course, for uh, both our favorite and least favorite segment of the show. Of course, it is time for the shock dot JPEG. And now the moment you've all been waiting for: shock dot JPG. This week, it's one that you can actually view on YouTube still. Oh wow, this is new. This is cool. Yeah. So uh, this one is called Russian Roulette. Knife cup test footage. Boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> Magician Brian Bushwood. Are you familiar with this guy? You know this guy? I don't know this guy. Well, he's he's done a few things uh, here and there on YouTube, but yeah, he was one of the early guys doing magic on YouTube. So this would be sent to people under the guise that it was real. Of course, I just gave away the plot. This is a magician. But he's setting up a series... He's setting up a, a bar stool with a, a lazy Susan on top that spins around. Mm-hmm. And so he's setting up a series of cups, one of which is going to have an upturned knife in it. And so what he's going to do is he's going to slam his hand down on one of these cups. It's a poly. It's like a, a, a styrofoam yeah. cup, and it goes through his hand. He screams in pain and goes, "Ta-da!" <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just you'd send that to people and they'd be like, oh my God, that guy is okay. It was later, of course, he put out a whole video saying like, here's how I did the trick, you know, but just on first glance, you see someone push their hand down and a knife just pierces through their hand and he reacts as you would react. Yeah. When someone ah! Gets, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a hard cut and that's my favorite yeah. part because then it cuts to him with a bloody bandage on his hand going, ta-da! <laughs> It's the ta-da that gets me. That's some good old-fashioned internet business. Classic magic. I love the idea that you could trick someone with something that is supposed yeah. to trick you. It's it, yeah. <laughs> it's intended to because you know, like you got internet magicians, you got guys that do like close-up magic or whatever. They're they're just kind of <laughs> lame. I'm a fucking baby. <laughs> uh, Goo Goo Gaga. Where'd the card go? I don't give a shit. Yeah, they're lame. I need to read the new IGN review on some <laughs> indie game I'm never going to play. And but we'll probably end up getting like in an indie bundle. Forgetting about five years later, yeah. Yeah. yeah my, oh, God, my Steam That's list. my entire library, yeah. Yeah, my, my, my Steam library is just like, yeah, you know, I'm never going to get around to playing Owlboy. Yeah, I finished it last year. It was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty fun. I mean... I mean, it's not the best game in the world, but... Yeah, I mean, it, like... If you've got some time to kill, it's I've, not a I've bad got, game. I've got so much stuff on my fucking oh, yeah. Steam list. Oh, yeah. And the sales on... Oh really? I gotta go take a look. Summer at that. sale just dropped today, baby. So, Anything good? Um, yeah, scorns on there. Uh, a couple things. I'll 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 send you some links. <laughs> okay. As I know, Death Store I think is probably on sale. They got the Ultra Kills on sale. Um, I heard good thing about Death Death Door. Same here. Yeah, I, I still haven't played it myself, but uh, it's on the it's on the list for a reason. Folks is on the list. It's on the list. Folks is on the list. <laughs> Not much in the way of a of a, of a shock. JPEG felt like maybe it was time for a fun one. So I'm yeah, glad this, we... this wasn't like uh, someone uh, like actually hurting themselves or taking a huge shit on a plate and then telling <laughs> someone like, "Oh, your car keys are in there," and then they go through the plate of shit and they're like, "Where's my car keys?" And you're like, "Oops." That was my trap for the unwritten Saw sequel I was involved in. So uh, you gave away the plot there. <laughs> Where's my car key? Are they in you got to get the key to get yourself out of the thing, or the thing's going to... I don't know. I'm still workshopping it. And now I have fucking Keir Starmer still on my screen. Jesus Christ, get that yeah, away from geez. me. What a terrible thing to do yourself. That's a shock.jpg. <laughs> Look at that fucking God. guy. Jesus, what? I guess it's time for the breath mint, Brian. It's time for your mom's favorite part of the show. It's time for the breath mint. I got a couple of things I could talk about here. Can I talk about the last 24 or so hours of my life? Please do. Last night I went and photographed a little band from the UK, Black Mini. and uh, Black Mini fucking rules. I'm just going to put that out there. Pretty good. I had heard some of their stuff had been a minute. But I listened to a new record, Hellfire. I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. It reminds me, 
and this is such a weird reference that I, or point of reference that I think very few people can get with. But try and try and stay with me here. It reminds me of the stuff that my teacher in my music theory class that I had taken in high school would play in order to challenge us. Yeah, I can see that definitely. They have a lot of jazz influence. They they play some interesting drum styles. There's... Yeah, it's it's very musical. It's it's uh, it's a very interesting tempo and key changes. I had like joked that it felt like it was a bunch of guys that were really into Zappa that like meditated in a cave over uh, Henry Rollins's liar. Because it, it wouldn't does... be that wrong, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, because it, it definitely goes from like <laughs> this really like percussive, aggressive guitar stuff to like very gentle guitars. Mm-hmm. And, what yeah. if I told you that I choked a man and it was the right thing to do? Yeah, I've always heard a lot. <laughs> I've always heard a lot of like Pink Floyd in them, just taken to that extreme. Like, what if? Yeah, what I, if I, they I were still like, writing? Uh, I yeah. feel like their their point of reference or influences for uh, like their their approach to music is is all over the place because there's stuff like oh you know you say like yeah this is Zappa, but then I hear like a little bit of Bowie, and then it's like in the same song it's like contemporary opera yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, like what the fuck is going on here so i went and photographed them it was at red flag which is like a newish venue first time photographing there lighting there only seems like it's really tough which it was but there was some good spots i, I was just really kind of taken aback by how uh, musical they were and how much what they were able to do on the record translated well live because which is there's rare a lot yeah. of shit going on well like the fucking drummer he's off to the stage facing the rest of the band okay and i like i thought like, huh that's interesting you know that's not true but i was like oh no he has to watch those guys for the changes yeah because there's a lot of them yeah a lot of changes i'm like oh that makes complete fucking sense now sure. that i think of it the show had like no local promotion Hmm. It felt like I felt like no one was talking about this show. I know I didn't hear any see anyone be like, "Oh fuck, back May's coming here." I mean, I didn't know until you told me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And like, actually, a guy drove by, and like, while I was waiting in line, actually drove by, and he's like, "Wait, is this the line for Black Midi?" And I go, "Yeah, it's kind of wild for a show that had no promotion, right?" And he just goes, "Yeah, what the fuck?" And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like he just fucking drove off, like, like a show that no, like, I mean, yeah, nobody. St. Louis is a town where like a really like couple times a year a really cool show will get booked and there'll be like the promoter has no faith in it and like 20 people show up or it gets canceled and it's just a fucking bummer but yeah this was like i don't know pretty well attended like 600 600 people i think just like watching people just have like a really good time listening to this acid jazz (laughs) avant-garde Yeah, punk they're, stuff and they're they're out there like i really like them a lot the new record hellfire is amazing hellfire so just dope yeah, yeah oh i fucking just the fact that they can just be really aggressive and bombastic and then like a song like still is in the middle where yes it's this beautiful finger uh style guitar and you know on the record there's horns and there's lap steel unfortunately no none of that live um i, I appreciate that they are able to still um even though they don't they lose that element of the dynamic dynamics of their performance by not having those other elements i respect that they found arrangements that worked yeah with just two guitar players a bassist and um a drummer Mm -hmm. i was i was really impressed that they were able to do that and i also respect they didn't do like backing tracks which i would have found to be really fucking cheesy yeah i leave that show Mm -hmm. and i get back to my apartment and i got back at a normal time got back like a little bit before 10 because it was Seven Doors, eight, nine. Yeah, classic uh, early show yeah. almost, yeah. Yeah, I think they probably got off the stage before 11 easily. But, like, I'm fucking tired. I work too much. I like, yeah. put in, like, a almost 10-hour day at my job and then photographed the right. show. <laughs> For so I'm fucking, hours, my yeah. ass is fucking beat. Like, if someone shot me in the arm, I just would have been like, I'll deal with it in the morning. Yeah. Uh, you know? Well, oh, okay. So the fucking <laughs> church, there's a church on my street. Mm-hmm. I guess it had some sort of function last night. I guess their parishioners decided to just park in the lot for my building. Uh. And I might have fucking lost my mind for a minute. Because I just, <laughs> just want to go home. I want to go. I got to get bed. Yeah. I got to get the fucking bed. And there's some fucking hoopty fucking F-150 in my fucking parking spot mm. that I fucking pay for. Mm. And uh, I'm like, what the fuck? So I got to park like two blocks away. Eesh. And I'm already fucking tired. Right. And now you're walking two blocks in the yeah. heat because even at nine or even at 10, it's probably just so, boiling out. Yeah. yeah. So 
I fucking load, uh, transferred all the photos to my computer, getting ready for bed. All that shit's done. I'm like, fucking fine. Lay in bed. Put on my fucking CPAP machines. I'm fucking decrepit. <laughs> and I'm laying in bed. I'm trying to fall asleep. I'm still so pissed about the fucking parking spot. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear, like, fucking sirens. Oh, God. And I'm like, cool. Cool sirens. Awesome. <laughs> and... Um, cool sirens 10 30 11 ish at night cool fucking I need to sleep and I realized like oh no they're all coming here I heard like three different fucking emergency vehicles fucking just run code to your building to the church to the church so I'm like sitting there and I'm like looking at the ceiling and I can see the reds and blues yeah just bouncing off the the ceiling of my bedroom I'm like I'm going to fucking they're they're gonna need to call more (laughs) they're gonna I'm so fucking (laughs) pissed yeah so too. I wake up in the morning. I had to fucking re- ready for work. I fucking walk down to my car and I'm like, this fucking sucks. Go to work, had to deal with all the fucking bullshit at my job. And eventually got to a situation where like it was gonna be another day where like, oh, I don't know, I don't get to take lunch. Just because it's it's not that like I can't, mm. but what what the fuck is gonna happen if I do? Like mm. someone is going to fucking come over and push over this house of cards. <laughs> And then they're God. just going to go back to their desk and be like, well, I didn't know. Well, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So I got into a situation where there was a bunch of dumb shit happening. I realized like, I'm about to be a huge asshole to some people that maybe don't deserve it. <laughs> and I'm no. like, you know what? I'm just going to go take lunch. And apparently some people got pissed off about that. But it's like, it would be a lot better. Yeah. It's a lot better than me making you cry as a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> like, believe me, this was the right choice. <laughs> this was the better option. So yes. I think if we live close enough to my job that I can fucking hop back to my apartment sometimes on my lunch break. So I do that. Use the bathroom, fucking take a deep breath. And I went in one entrance of my building when I came back to my apartment building on lunch, do my thing, and I go down the other, and which is the street side. And there's just a fucking like baby robin on the steps with its fucking chest ripped out, just perfectly centered. Oh. And I'm like, cool, cool, great. Great life I'm living Ooh. right here. Great life I'm living right here. Seriously and fucked vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Just like, oh, this all just is a fucking kick <laughs> in the dick. Go to work. Deal with some fucking bullshit. Leave. And I'm like, fuck, I'm, I, I got to indulge myself with food. So I stop at the fucking Qdoba, which I know is a fucking bad idea. We've had this discussion here. <laughs> that the Qdoba in question that, that I go to Qdoba, yes. is, is not cash money. Nightmare town. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, that's not the best one. I get there and the lady in front of me is like the worst kind of Qdoba customer. Cause she's the one that wants like, she doesn't say what she wants at the beginning. She lets one item get all the way down to the register and be like, Oh, and I need another burrito. Oh, and I need a quesadilla. Oh, uh, can I get more cheese on that? And I'm like, I'm going to yeah. fucking kick your ass lady. But this poor girl makes all the time in the world for this terrible fucking customer. And she comes to me and I know exactly what I want. My order is very simple. What is your order out of curiosity? Oh, it's usually like, you know, whole wheat, white rice, black beans, chicken or steak, depending on how I feel. Real hot, pico. Sometimes I'll get the, the creamy, spicy salsa. Tortilla chips, a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of cheese. So yeah, you're, you're, not a, you're not a fussy. I mean, yet. I used to work yeah. at a fucking Qdoba, and they don't teach people how to roll the fucking burritos anymore, which no. is uh, why they fucking fall in half. Like, I actually <laughs> one time watched a girl struggle with my burrito. I'm like, man, I used to work at Qdoba. Can I show you how to do this? Let me get back right? there, yeah. <laughs> like, let me show you how to fucking do this. <laughs> Jump right, we've counter. had this discussion. Yeah. I fucking Qdoba has lost its fucking way. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, they've gone woke in the sense that, like, they make bad food. It does something for me. I don't know. But, like, we well, get... a tasty experience. She gets to the idea. salsa station, and I'm like, I, I say, you know, Roja, you know, all this, Pico. And she goes, is that it? I go, yeah, from here. And instead of moving down, she just starts folding up my brio. Um, I'm, like, staring at her. And she goes, what? I go, I wasn't done. And she's like, starts, I'm like, no, you're going to fuck it up. And I'm like, she's like, yeah, I'm like nothing's gone right today. I'll just have this fucking dry ass burrito. Mm. And I went home and it was dry as fuck. Gah. And I'm like, cool, cool. I know, I know it's, I know it's shitty to be mad service workers, but sometimes it's like, man, this was my highlight. This yeah, was going to be like the yeah. only good thing that happened yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm here. Comp- so that's my breath, man. Is that nothing's good? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I, I photographed oh uh, I photographed Young the Giant Saturday. Uh, hey, good. If I could just find time and energy at the same time, uh, same place and in, in space and in the continuity of existence, I'd have that shit up on my fucking website. But that was fun. It was cool. Like, I think Young Giants, like, it's not necessarily music I love to listen to, but, like, they have a great live show. Really good presentation. The vocalist is, uh, seems comes off as a very thoughtful person. New record. It's got some stuff I really like, some stuff I really like, stuff I really don't like. But the yeah, stuff, yeah. the high points are really good. Um, and I think they made a good choice by going with a very cinematic production. Yeah. Because I think that actually translates very live to their uh, live presentation. But it was also just like really weird to be like, here's like this listening to songs, watching songs being performed that are, are kind of heady in some of their subject material. You know, uh, the vocalist of Young Giant is a um, Indian American. His father is an immigrant, and the new record American Bollywood is in part about the alienation he feels about being like an Indian American in what is the whitest ass fucking thing in the world, which is <laughs> indie music. And the only thing whiter than that is like the guy that came up with si- sour cream. <laughs> um, fair, fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like I'm like watching you know these songs being performed and I'm like wow this is really beautiful and I also realized that like oh yeah but this place is a pavilion <laughs> in the between a fucking garbage dump and a casino yeah. in Maryland Heights and uh, when it's not summertime it's also an ice rink yep <laughs> which is like one of those things like this has really just cheapened the whole like I feel like the human experience <laughs> has been really cheapened here like, here's a, these really beautiful yeah. songs and, and a thing that feels so hollow in a way like you gotta fucking like and when you exit this venue you gotta go like off fucking gravel road yeah not great not <laughs> it's just, it just kind of really <laughs> feels like uh it doesn't feel great it's like like oh, i said it's really good experience and now i gotta drive a gravel road it sours the whole deal yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. worked there for several years I, I i know the exact feeling like oh yeah i just heard uh what was the show? It was like Blink-182 and AFI. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a kick-ass show. And you got to wait 40 minutes to get out of the parking lot. Yeah, and you're sitting there in your car going, well, this is the worst part of the day so far. What is happening now? Yeah, just yeah. Uh, terrible. Ugh. You could always kill some time at the Dave & Buster's down the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, you know, the glory hole there used to be so nice. <laughs> it's gone woke, though. They yeah, they got, it's gone woke. <laughs> the glory hole's gone the, the, the glory hole's gone woke, folks. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. How could a glory hole go woke? Uh, well, the, the, there's an old bit about, like, you used to be able to do this, and there would be, like, a woman on the other side or whatever. Yeah, just like, I don't know. Like, now, I don't know. now it's somebody glory, with pronouns. You, you, got, you stick your dick in the glory hole. I don't know. PETA? Get... Is there PIA involved? <laughs> someone someone sucking you off and telling you that it's bad to um <laughs> it's bad to raise chickens in your backyard. And you're like, what the fuck? I, how how does he know that I got chickens in my right. backyard? Someone wa- This is not anonymous. Yeah. This is not this is not the uh the sexual encounter I was anticipating. I I bid you good day. I've been <laughs> I've been data tracked in the glory. <laughs> <laughs> when I said accept all cookies on gloryholefinder.net, I didn't realize that was going to be. They're, they're compiling my glory hole data. The serve me ads. Serve me, serve me ads for jet skis and hotel rooms in the Ozarks. Oh, boy. God, it does seem like that's the... Data mine the glory hole. That's, that's the episode title. Data, data mine of the glory hole. Glory hole. Um, so yours couldn't be possibly any more depressing than mine. So no, actually not. I, I've I've been having a good time. So okay, I, well, thanks. Good, yeah, have, have sorry. Fun. As you saw when you uh, when you arrived here, yeah, I, you were you were playing Guitar Hero. Well, like playing, a man with a fuller head of hair. Indeed, I, I was playing actually a modified version of Guitar Hero for the PC called Clone Hero. Yeah, now, Clone Hero allows you to import all the songs from previous Guitar Hero and Rock Band entries and play them on a uh, plastic guitar of your choice. I found 
a couple of uh, PS2 era ones, got an adapter, plugged them directly into the computer out here, and have been just having a good old time. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, you got, I got all the uh, Metallica track packs, which I told you uh, my wrist is killing me because yeah. of that. But well, uh, is it, is I'm it trying to play them on Expert as well, so that's a big... Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's not good. But it is kind of a nice little um, throwback, like, oh, yeah. Because I didn't want to go back through and buy all the Guitar Hero games again. I have a couple of them. I have a couple of the Rock Band games from the yeah. PS3 era. But uh, it's it's been fun kind of going through that. My... My wife got me back on this. This is an interesting thing because she was really into... We went to Edison's a couple months ago. Edison's mm-hmm. is this place. It's kind of like a, a Dave & Buster's or a, or a, a... What is it called? A main event. You know, one of those places where yeah. you get unlimited gaming and you, you do all these games for tickets. Well, one of the games that she really liked was this piano-based one, and it was a rhythm game. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, if you like that, you're really going to like, you know, Clone Hero. She so far has not enjoyed Clone Hero. She says, it's too fast. I can't do it. I said, well, yeah, that's because you're trying to play on hard, you know. So I'm trying to get her into that, which is always good. Aside from Clone Hero, I haven't really been gaming too much aside from continuing on with uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. It's a long game. It's a JRPG. It takes a while. Um, the game's still fun. Kind of funny, the the protagonist. Uh, uh, I, I A friend's husband was trying to get into it, and he described it as, like, I've spent like the last two hours playing this game and I haven't done anything. Yes. Any Yakuza game that will happen, especially with like mini games and all like mm-hmm. the side quest stuff. But there's whole sections of this game where that will happen. There's an entire mini game about getting your business from a sweatshop to the number one uh, business in all of Yokohama, which is where the game takes place. And I can I can safely say I spent at least two three hours just playing that mini mm-hmm. game. <laughs> oh yeah, no, the one that gets me is like the fucking Circuit Racer. Yes, that was from the older ones. I don't think Circuit Racer is in this one. Oh, I fucking I was unemployed during one of those games. Was on. <laughs> you playing like Yakuza Zero? Because that's the first one that, that Yakuza uh, Zero, Yakuza Yakuza Zero was the first one I played. And I thoroughly enjoyed it from oh, press so back. good. Yeah, I played y- Yakuza Kiwami, mm-hmm. and I got a little bit into it, but I just didn't really. Yeah, I think part of that is because it's trying to remake an older game, and there's a bit of a disconnect. Y- yeah. But, they brought the engine in, but still some of the gameplay is kind of twiggy. Also, the character model is a little uh, off. Yeah, you know. there's some just some things they did that were like it doesn't. Not everything is like the same fidelity. Yes, and then that is an unfortunate side effect of trying to take an older game and update it. These HD remasters that you yeah, see for other games do that re- same remakes and same all that. Thing, yeah. yeah. But uh, Zero, I thought, was so fucking oh, good. Zero is great. It, you can really, honestly, if you just want the next-gen type experience, you can play Zero, you can play Six, and then you can play this one, which is technically the seventh game, but they called it Yakuza Like a Dragon because Like a Dragon is the title in in the original Japanese releases. Mm. So so they're doing that Resident Evil 7 thing where they're, mm. <laughs> where they're putting the Japanese title and the American title together. And then I saw something that they're going to be coming out with a Yakuza game following Kiryu Cosma from Zero and all those mm-hmm. other ones in a separate game. And then they're going to have Like a Dragon Infinite Money, I think is the subtitle. Yeah. So you're going to follow two different protagonists in two different games. They're not going to meet up. It's going to be interesting. But I the like Yakuza that. series is always fun. Yeah, yeah they're so good. Aside from that, I have been really enjoying Black Mirror Season 5, or 6, excuse me. Season 6 is the newest one. The big thing I like about the Black Mirror this year... Mr. White, the, the, what if the phones got too smart? <laughs> they don't do as much of that, at least in the couple episodes that I've seen. The ones that, that, that are coming out now are really focused, at least the first two episodes of this season, are really focused on giving the middle finger to Netflix, which is kind of fun. Um, so the <laughs> first episode is called Joan is Awful, and it's this this woman, played by Annie Murphy from uh, Schitt's Creek, she has a bad day at her job. She comes home, and her boyfriend wants to put on Streamberry, which is the in-universe mm-hmm. Netflix uh, analog. And there's a show called Joan is Awful. Well, the woman has the same hair. Her name is Joan. They're like, we got to watch this. Starts watching it, and it's Salma Hayek performing the day she just went through. Like, the same day. 
And so it, it kind of spirals out from there, but it's an interesting concept. It's really funny. Um, they're really, really, Charlie Brooker must have fucking had it with Netflix, and he's just giving them the finger every episode. It's really fun. There's a, the second episode of the series is called The Lock Henry, and that's really also giving the finger to the true crime documentary genre so that's he gets to have a lot of fun poking other people for doing stupid shit and it's mm-hmm. but also telling interesting stories while doing it so i think this is probably one of the better of the netflix era black mirror seasons because you know they they were on bbc at first and then they got bought by netflix yeah i i still think the the original season is probably the best yeah because it was very fresh it was very mm-hmm. new yeah and, and i would agree with that i mean uh, that that first six episode run is pretty much flawless. And then the I, I think probably the Christmas episode with John Hamm is yes probably oh, still God. the best one. It I still go back and just watch that one because it's just it's good. Yeah, no, it's it fucking talk about fucking uh, hits like bricks. You oh know? my God, yeah. Well, Charlie Brooker, man, that guy, as far as I'm aware, has not made anything bad. Like everything I've seen that that of his, like even going back to the 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 weekly wipe that he used to do for the BBC, which was a rundown of weekly news stories, but told through his kind of sardonic uh, lens, and he himself being the pre- the presenter, um, he invented the uh, Diane Morgan's character Philomena Kunk, mm-hmm. and she just had a series on Netflix called Kunk on Earth. Uh, this character Philomena Kunk was just this complete moron, but she thought she was smart, and so it's like this really right, great right. counterpoint. I love that. So that's a good time, definitely, because I had kind of lost faith in in Black Mirror as a series when season five and then Bandersnatch came out. And I was like, Bandersnatch was interesting, kind of a choose your own adventure deal. It's fine. It's okay. Interesting. Not great. I I tried doing Bandersnatch with a couple of friends. We had the perfect, it was like fucking snowy out. Like, you know, it was a perfect moment to like fuck with it. And they just couldn't keep interest. But I'm like, oh, this is. I thought it was interesting. I mean, I think I probably would have thought it was shitty at some point, but like. The first like twenty thirty minutes we were messing with it, I'm like, this is I, I kind of like what this is trying to do. These characters are interesting. The setting is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really disappointed that my friends couldn't keep attention, but I think that was the last time I really fucked with Black Mirror. It wasn't like the last Black Mirror season, like in 2019. Yeah, it's been a while. Because I was like, yeah. wasn't that the one that had Miley Cyrus? Yes, yes, doing yes. Uh, had like a hole. <laughs> had like a hole. <laughs> Which I thought was clever. I don't know. I, I like her, but uh, I thought that was. I thought I actually thought that was actually a very strong episode. And, yeah, like her performance was good. But you, if you ask me about any of the other ones from that season, I couldn't tell you. The other guy from Breaking Bad being the horny Star Trek dude. Oh, Jesse Plemons. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, that that also the, like playing like a guy that doesn't know that he's terrible. Yeah, oh, like very great. interesting. Just really interesting. He's just like also like La Waterweight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He definitely has slimmed down since then, for sure. Hated in America was kind of a, a weird cancel culture thing that they were trying to do. Like, oh, you get canceled and then, like, murder drones are going to blow you up or something. I can't remember what the plot of that Wasn't one was. Wasn't the one that was like, it was like fucking bees or something? That was the one. It was Hated in America. Yeah, that, it was the bees that are going to come kill you if you get enough down votes or some shit. Like, oh, well, that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> but I do think season six has kind of picked up a lot of that steam, and it's definitely up there for me. And then the last thing I want to talk about a book I started reading. I still every day I'm like plowing, trying to plow through this book. It's, it's, it's dense and it's really good. Grady Hendrix. I think I talked about this on a previous show where Grady Hendrix wrote a great book called the final girl support group. It was, <laughs> it was about the final girls from a slasher film all okay. getting together in therapy and then it turns out one of uh, someone is going around killing the final girls from the final girls support. Okay, I like that. So it's an interesting concept. It had a really cool thing. It was a, a very propulsive book. A really easy read. Just kind of chugged along on its own energy. Great. So when I saw that Grady Hendrix had a new book out, I said, "Fuck yes!" It's called "How to Sell a Haunted House," hmm. and uh, <laughs> okay, it's just the title alone. I mean, the, both of them, fi- final girl support group, and and. How to Sell a Haunted House, right off the bat, that gets you with the title. About halfway through it, it's a real slow burn, which I didn't expect from them. Like, Final Girl kicks off right away. But this Mm -hmm. one takes a while, because it's about a brother and a sister. Parents die. They're left to deal with this house that, 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 you know, maybe has some spooky family secrets in it, Mm -hmm. like all this stuff. And so it 
takes a little while to get there. But once it does, okay, now we're going. But you got to have some patience with it. you got to sure. give it some time. Unfortunately, some people will not. And I think that's a downfall of something like this because it's, it's great genre work. Boy, horror is a hard genre. Yeah. Horror is a hard genre to have a new take. Because yeah. a lot of it's been done. A lot of it's been done. But, you know, that's why, like, you know, um, like, It Follows mm-hmm. hits so hard or, you know, is so effective. Because, it, I mean, yeah, there's things that are familiar there. But, God, that f- still, like, I'll watch it every yeah. couple years and be like, this is still fucking good. Yeah. Or even, like, um, uh, Raw. These stories that are kind of like, okay, it's well-worn for the genre. But, like, usually flips something on its head, yeah. Right. And that's what Grady does with their work is definitely has that, like, yeah, you've heard a haunted house story. Stephen King's done a million of them, right? Or you've yeah. heard Amityville Horror or whatever. But we're going to do something weird with it. We're going to we're gonna flip it on its head. What if the haunted house has spooky dick? <laughs> that's a Chuck Tingle book. <laughs> the, the haunt... Pumped in the ass by the haunted house's spooky dick. <laughs> Chuck, call me, okay? I'm saying. <laughs> I got ideas. But, uh, but yeah, definitely worth a read. Uh, how, the, how to the sell. The House of the Spooky Dick. <laughs> Her baby with a ghost baby. <laughs> and the Im- ghost... And the, go- <laughs> Im- and the Im- ghost baby is a weeb. <laughs> I, can feel, I can feel the ghost baby putting up wall scrolls inside the womb. <laughs> and oh, eating, my. I, I keep pulling Pocky wrappers out of my... <laughs> Vagina? That's, uh, that's I guess. I don't that's know. Carlton Mellick the Third with the haunted vagina stuff. Yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The haunted, the haunting of my vagina by the spooky house. If you've never read Carlton Mellick the Third, boy, uh, you want to talk about the weird, gross-out genre stuff? He's oh, okay. he's all over it. Uh, it's called the. There's a book called The Haunted Vagina. Really? And it's surprisingly a good read. I I'm was sure. I, was, I, uh, I mean, vaginas are scary. <laughs> He also wrote a book called Totally Fucked Up, which is about the apocalypse, which I guess kind of makes sense, but I yeah. wish we would have called it something else, because, you know, it's time. Let's uh, let's hear where we can find uh, one or two or all of us on the interwebs there. If you want to send me death threats or say you know where I live, uh, you can find me. Um <laughs> Yeah, if someone with a map of St. Louis being like, <laughs> say he lives near a church. <laughs> Tapping. Guess, guess what? Guess what? There's a lot of churches yeah. in St. Louis. No, they don't all burn down. That's the... Oh, oh, yeah. R.I.P. Skate Laboris. Skate Laboris. Yes. Skate Labori. I never went there. I have a friend who almost played a show there and then found out there was a white power band on the bill. Ew. I think yeah. the white power band got kicked off because Good. people were like, wait a second. <laughs> we thought they were just dudes from Joplin. And I'm like, well... <laughs> That's 50, your 50. <laughs> yeah, a a a three or four dudes from Joplin yeah. that want to play music together ain't probably like unified by locality or music. No. It's probably yeah. about who they White think power. is controlling the media. Yeah. Anyways, uh, R.I.P. to that place. Yeah. That sucks. Thankfully, no one got hurt or yeah. died. But uh, man, it just oh, a bummer. They got rid of that skate park under the overpass here on the hill, and that kind of sucked. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is uh, people like immediately when they heard that the church skate park burned down, it was like, I bet it was like some fucking right winger from like Cape Girardeau that like wouldn't like, surprise me. Oh, like, yeah. I can't believe they put a fucking skate park in a church doing their their 57 Chevys and their Hoop de Vils. It's a woke church. Guy. <laughs> they made they made the church. Woke. God, we're really running that one into the ground, but I guess. Culturally, we are running that way to the grid. It's not just us. So, if you want to find me on the internet, uh, it's ishotgeedyboard, I S H O T G U I D B O R D, on Instagram and Twitter. Um, by the time this comes out, Young the Giant Photo should be up on my website, amusicphotographer.com. If you want to mm-hmm. check out my portfolio of music, it's assholemusicphotographer.com. Uh, my, by the time this comes out, my photos of. Black Mini at Red Flag should be up on the Arts STL. Hey, nice. Forgot they fucking existed. Uh, <laughs> the Arts STL is run by Jason Green, who's a guy I know from my days when I was a budding freelancer. A little publication here in St. Louis called Playback, Playback STL. Yeah. Uh, if you if you can imagine, there used to be print publications, and they were cool ish. Yeah. Hard to imagine these days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, we actually had like a zine scene here. I still keep some of those. Like, 
some of those are like just centigrading in the box i keep them in but it's like all weird shit about like like getting mad at panera for getting rid of like a vegetarian <laughs> sandwich 20 something years ago mm-hmm. but it's which is fucked up yeah my work for panera there was actually a guy who worked at customer service that said that he got a complaint about a sandwich that was taken off the menu 20 years ago i'm like was it the vegetarian sandwich he was like fuck <laughs> he knew <laughs> i was like dude because like yeah because it was like i remember when they took it off man it was, mm-hmm. it was a fucked up thing we did yeah <laughs> anyways that's a place where you'll be seeing some of my photography Yay. in the near future uh very excited jason's a good dude lots of good people over there it's actually kind of nice it reminds me of when i did playback which is yeah, better nice times little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when there was media yeah. anyways um <laughs> jason yes uh, you can find me online anywhere there's a video crime, V-I-D-E-O-C-R-I-M-E. Well, chances are that's me. That's Twitter in most places, with the exception, of course, of Instagram and TikTok. Right on those places, I am at Laser Goose CEO. Let's see here. You can find the show, 48minutesofdogsbarking.com. You can hit us up on Patreon, patreon.com slash 48minutesofdogs. And that is where you can uh, throw us a little dosh, you know, kind of cool. help the you know, thing go on. You know? Yeah. We're about a year in. We're having fun. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, God, uh, we've done this for a year. <laughs> in two weeks, it will officially be Gosh. a year. Yeah. So uh, any any assistance is appreciated, Patreon. Should Trump we recreate the Daniel Dogs. Pearl video? <laughs> I could be Daniel Pearl. <laughs> I know you're like having a, a bad st- week, but come on. like a <laughs> fake stage knife. <laughs> With the little injector that pfft, squirts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> You'll finally get the video you wanted. Uh, so <laughs> you can reach either of us via our emails there, Jason at 48minutesdogsbarking.com or Brian at 48minutesdogsbarking.com. If you want to recreate. The Daniel Pearl video. <laughs> please, yeah, please recreate the Daniel Pearl Not video. Not literally, only strictly in a sci- in a uh, cheaply made B movie sense. Please do not actually recreate the Daniel Pearl video. You know, the only reason I I do remember the Daniel Pearl video is my friend's fucking yeah. weird father coming in to <laughs> harass Mister Gigglestein. <laughs> Such a deep lore of deep, the show. Deep lore yeah. of the show. <laughs> the the guinea pig that lost his diamond factory in the war. <laughs> well, you can give us a call as well. 314-246-9766. That's 314-AHOY-POO if you like to spell with your telephone. Mm-hmm. You can also uh, find us on any of the old podcast apps. Give us a like. Reviews are welcome. Please do that very thing. Uh, give us five stars on fucking iTunes or I'm going to fucking murder you. Well, we're going to leave you a little bit of music as we always do. Mike Park of Asian Man Records was posting about this this week because it is an Asian Man Records release. Band called Doki Doki. Oh, Great wow. tune called I Was Killing It, Man. I enjoy the living shit out of this song. Uh, Mike has his ear to the ground, as always, and I appreciate him for that. So uh, enjoy. We're going to leave you with that. And as we always say at this time, namaste. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.